friends, it's Kathy, and welcome to my YouTube channel, It's in the Cards Divination. Today, we're going to talk about Lenormand cards, which is a different type of card reading system other than tarot that you can learn. So if you have an interest in anything about Lenormand, I would encourage you to stay in this video and we'll have a little bit of a run through on these cards and this system for you. Before we do that, I would encourage you to click on the like button and if you would consider subscribing and ringing the bell to receive notifications of more videos. All right, let's get started. All right, Lenormand is a completely different system, as I mentioned. It, uh, they feel it originated with Marianne Lenormand in France back in the Napoleonic period. Now, I won't get into the history of it, but that is where the name came from. She was a cardamancy, a reader, and she used to read the cards based on playing cards. And that's, you'll notice in this that that's exactly what they've done with some of these Lenormand cards. So, let me go back and let's talk about my own journey in this. When I first started reading tarot, I noticed there were times when my answers to the questions were not as clear or concise as I would prefer to give from my clients. And it was getting frustrating a little bit. So I thought after I delved into and I looked at the different systems, I came across Lenormand. And it does, it, it provides a much more concise and blunt picture of what's going on than the tarot cards do. The difference, one of the main differences, other than the obvious, you can see the deck is actually a lot smaller. First of all, there's only 36 cards in a Lenormand deck, and it is actually even tinier as far as the size, easier to shuffle. And um, it is a very differently read type of system. Lenormand is, I find, a card system that appealed to me because it's structured. And if you're someone that likes reading books and structure, linguistics and grammar, this could be the system for you because there's very specific rules on how to read the Lenormand cards, okay? So let's get started. If you're interested, First thing, of course, I did is I bought a deck. They're not the easiest to get a hold of. They don't have the same variety right now that tarot does. Tarot comes in all different shapes and sizes. But you should be able to find a deck if that's something that you would like to do. I apologize for the shaking. All right, so then I started buying books. Well, of course, first I went on the internet and started looking at all the different meanings. And there are every card has its own meaning just like tarot does. But the difference with these cards is they're more symbolic. Hmm, not the nicest card, is it? But you can see that's a coffin. There's nothing else on that card except the blanket, but a coffin and the inset of a playing card. Okay, we'll get into that shortly. So I bought a book. I bought a few books, but I would have two specifically that I would highly recommend. This being one of them, The Art of Lenormand Reading, Decoding Powerful Messages by Alexandra Mustwork. He's a really good reader. Um, you can see the book is full of a lot of good information. Each uh, page has all the meanings and it talks about the different things, even the planets. And if you were to read it contextually by health, work, love, and they are also, cards in Lenormand are very positive, negative, and neutral specific, okay? And if you just go through, this is one of the books, like I say, I would highly recommend if you're interested in Lenormand. That's one of them. The other one, I don't have a paper copy, but I can tell you because it's in digital form, I have it on my Kobo is the Essential Lenormand uh, Original Guide, your guide, or the Essential Lenormand, so it's called the Essential Lenormand, your guide to precise and practical fortune telling. 
and it's written by Rana George. She's an excellent reader of La Norman. She's been reading since she was a child, so I would highly encourage you to check her out and her meanings. And that book is really for someone who's interested in learning because it's very thick. I'll just warn you right now. Okay, let's say, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get into this. Can you explain a little more, Kat? Sure. Let's go through, first of all, each card, just so you can see what they look like. I'm not going to go through meanings here today, other than a few I might happen to talk about. All right. There we have, as I had mentioned, the coffin. There's a house. The sun. Rider. Whip and broom. And you can see the insets for the playing cards that are on these ones. They're not on all of the Norman cards. Some don't have that. But this system is how they originally read it. And so, for example, if you were to read this card, which the whip and the broom can talk about uh, punishment, conflict, it also is referencing the jack of clubs. So some readers will use the inserts as well as the meanings of the symbols to get a more, um, give more depth to the reading, okay? So let's continue here. The tree, the bouquet, I'll just move those over a bit, and the mountain. You can see there's not much on there. There are numbered, the cards are one to 36, and the mountain is always considered card 21, so it doesn't change. Now we have the birds, the ring. Look at that, there's nothing on here except the ace of clubs, number, and a ring. No picture, that's it. Child, tower, not to be confused with the tarot tower, which means completely different things. This card is actually considered neutral in the Lenormand deck, as opposed to the tower, sometimes has a negative connotation to it in tarot. Scythe, a bear, you can see there's a lot of animals, eh? And nature, the lilies, uh, stars, key, lettern, fox, clouds, heart, fish, Garden, stork, crossroads or paths, the moon, the book, the snake. Uh, I wonder what that symbol represents. You can see the queen of clubs in there. Mm. The mice, the man, and the woman. So there is a man and a woman and a child in this deck. And if you as a querent are female and they're asking you the question, that's representing them and the male will represent their significant other or a, an important person that's part of the answer in the reading. It, whether say example, if it was a work question, that could represent their boss or even their spouse depending on the situation and the question asked, right? Clover. Ship. Card 36 is the cross, the dog, and the anchor. Okay, so that's just a quick overview of what they look like. Now, if you are interested, as I say, in the Lenormand reading, that's the first thing you do. Have keywords associated with each card. And as I say, there's only 36, so maybe it's not as daunting as tarot if you had to learn meanings. But don't worry, you will be using your intuition, just not with necessarily with respect to the symbology. Okay, it is and it isn't, so let me explain. For example, let's do, um, you're starting to learn. You've, you've somehow managed to get some keywords for each card, and now you need to take that and put them into some kind of an answer. The way we start in Lenormand is by reading with two 
cards or pairs. Let's say you pulled the dog and the anchor. Okay. The first, we read the Lenormand cards in what's called a string of cards, or what I consider almost a sentence. And they're best read in pairs. I'll explain in a moment. The first card is always considered the subject. Then the next card beside it to the right describes the subject. Okay? It's just like a noun and an adjective. The second card to the right would be the adjective. So basically, you have the dog here, and once you get to know the meanings, the most common reference of a dog as a subject is a friend. A friend. What is describing the friend? The anchor. And when you learn the meanings, you'll understand. Anchors can be referring to maybe somebody you're holding on to. Anchors sometimes they stay put, right? So someone you've held on to for a long time, a friend you've held on to. So this is describing the friend or a long-term friend. Uh, this can also be a stable friend. This sometimes represents the anchor for some people represents work. You could say a work friend, a colleague, okay? So that's one way of reading a pair. So the best thing is, but here's a trick. You've read it this way. Now you switch it around. If you had dealt the cards and the anchor came first, then the dog. Now this becomes the subject and this becomes the describing of that. So for example, and it can also be in the way of a, a verb and an adverb. So say this was a more of an action type card, like the rider, there's actual movement in the card, or the whip, where there's actual movement going on. You could then be reading it as a verb, and this would be the adverb. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's read this, though, as a subject. Let's say the anchor is referring to, let's see, I was going to say work, but if we do romance, let's do romance instead. A long-term, this actually describes how the anchor is. So the anchor is something you've had for a long time, something that's stable, something you've held on to. Loyalty, the dog is sometimes referred to as loyal. That would be a good descriptor. Loyal, stability, you could describe someone that way. Uh, dependable, job, if it was a work-related situation. Um, friendly, I guess it wouldn't apply in that case. So you have to apply the different meanings. Now, this is where your intuition comes in. So when you're doing the question or doing the answer to the question, the meanings that pop up to you with your intuition are the ones you need to use. That's when it becomes clearer to you. Sometimes within the card, even if there is a little bit of something going on, that can also intuitively pop out at you. For example, in some of them, there are a few little details that maybe stick out that you can use as part of the reading. So that's how you can combine the cards um, and the dog. So in other words, you almost have to have the meanings in two different forms. You have to have them as a subject. What does that mean as a subject? And what does that mean as a descriptor? Okay, how is it describing the subject? All right. So let me go on to another pair. I'll show you one that I have used before myself. This kind of hit me one day all of a sudden. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was looking at these two. I pulled the house and the coffin. I thought, oh boy, what the heck is that? So the first thing I do when I start reading is I'll read each meaning individually. So I went home, could be representing a home, death. I don't know. Death home. A funeral home. Right? Now, of course, that's not a situation you hope you have to read for, but that's a way of combining it and to make sense of what it's telling you. So it's how spirit talks to you in this language as to how you interpret the combination. I mean, this could be also referring to a loss, losing your home. Lost home. So you could describe the home is lost 
or um, ending to a real estate because sometimes the home refers to actual real estate. So maybe there's a real estate deal that's ended. So there's different ways, as you can tell, and there's more combinations in Linderman than you could ever imagine. So it's what speaks to you. All right. So I would highly recommend you go through the whole 36 cards, do the combinations two, 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 until you get the idea of how it works for you. Reverse them, read the combination the other way, and then go through, go through. It's going to take a while because you want to try different scenarios based on different situations. Is it a love situation? It's contextual. Is it a work reading? Is it, you know, there's all kinds of different, there's a money, is it a family situation? What is the question? Of course, it's always dependent on the question, right? So the first way then, once you've managed to get a better understanding of combinations and pairs, you would want to do your first reading with a Lenormand card. All right. Let me see here. Let me pull another card for you. All right. These are called strings of cards. And when they read side by side like this. And Lenormand works best with odd number cards. Three, five, seven, nine. And that's because the center card in a line is the focus of the reading or the theme. Okay, so let's say you have somebody that comes to you, they don't have a question, as usual, and you're like, oh, what is this about? And if your intuition is not knocking on the door that day, maybe it's a little quiet, you say, well, I know it's around this house. There's a situation about the house. Maybe it's not actually the house itself. Maybe it's the family in the house. That could very well be the situation. So you say to your client, well, there seems to be a situation here around your home, okay? Um, and maybe, or your comfort, maybe this is representing their, their feeling of protection and security and safety. Sometimes the home can mean that. And so again, it's dependent on your intuition, it's dependent on how many meanings you, you understand in this, and it takes time to learn. But you come up with your own system of reading it based on these rules. So go, you start with the first. So basically a three card reading at its basic level is two pairs. Okay. You're going to read this. Well, first let's try it with all three, all individual. Ending, home, stable. Hmm. Well, that might mean something. You can see there's an end here or loss. Um, comfort has been lost in a situation. Sometimes this refers to work. So you're saying, well, there's been an ending. There's been a loss. It looks like it could be around your family. There's a situation going on, or maybe they, they're home. Maybe they've lost something and, or something's ended. Maybe they had to sell a house. Maybe they had to move. It could be many reasons especially if you don't have a question. It's a little more tricky unless you get those little intuition pop-ups coming in. Then you say, so you've read the combination, comfort has been lost. Okay, now this becomes the subject and this now describes the house. Well, you know what? Your comfort's been lost, but the home, and it looks like it's around the home because we know it's a theme, but it's stable or you're going to be holding on to this house. The house is being held on to, right? Because that's one of the meanings of the anchor. Or let's just try this. Sometimes this is representing sickness. There's been family sickness. There's been sickness, home sickness. Uh, you could say maybe there's been some sickness in the home. And with the pandemic, we could be looking at that. Or maybe they were working from home, because sometimes the anchor is referring to work. Working at home. So that describes the home. What's the home doing? You're staying put at home. The anchor is describing that. So basically, you could then say, we could start at the beginning. There's been a loss. Your comfort uh, loss here is, um, is causing you this. It's around your home your family, okay? Your home, though, is your family life is stable. 
there's stability there. And then the end here is like the period. So now this is the subject. So now you can go like so. Subject or noun, adjective. Noun, adjective. Noun. So you could end it on that subject. The subject is you're staying put in this house. Okay, so you could say that perhaps if that was part of the question or what they were referring to. Maybe they're worried about losing, they've lost homes before in the past. Home has been lost, okay? But going forward, the home, you're stable. You're going to be holding on to this house, okay? So that's one way of reading it. One extra pair, some readers do in a three card reading, is then they, they do this pair, this pair, and then they read the last card. And then some at the very end will read what's called mirroring. They read the first and the last card together to get more information about this loss situation that you've been holding on to. You're holding on to that loss in the past, from the past. So that could also provide you with some more information depending on the question. So I hope that helps. Um, once you've managed to gain more experience reading cards of three, a string, you can go on to five, seven, nine, however, but a three card is good to master because eventually the spreads in Lenormand, you'll do what's called a portrait spread. It's a, it's a portrait of nine cards, so three, three, and three. And it's good to master the three cards. Ultimately, in Lenormand, you may want to, down the road, learn how to read the grand tableau, it's called where all 36 cards are put on the table for a reading, and you're basically reading certain areas of that based on what you see in this grand tableau. And there's many rules about reading those. That's more complex, obviously, and it takes a long time to do a reading of 36 cards, I can tell you that. Now, directionality is also important um, in some of these cards. There's a few cards that are directional, okay? I'll just quickly have a look here. For example, um, and where they're placed, okay? Let's say the mountain was here in the middle. Mountain is usually referring to an obstacle or getting stuck, not being able to. It's like, think about it like you can't get over a mountain. You have to walk around it. So a loss, a huge loss, because the mountain is huge. That's describing it. This obstacle, though, you will be able to get past it because there's a positive card on the end here. Um, it'll stabilize. So that's one way of looking at it. It always depends where it's located. If this card was at the end of the sentence, they're not going to be moving forward for a while. They're kind of stuck in that situation. So again, those are little tricks on how to read them. Uh, as I was saying, the direction, you could also use the ship as a directional card. You can see it's moving this way, right? So where are you going to? This is a traveling card. Traveling to here. Moving away from here. So again, that's a directional. Let's see. There's a few others. I don't, I don't see the man and woman as directional unless you are reading the grand tableau. You can see they're facing different directions, or they're both facing this way. But that's if you're reading the ground tab below. Let me see what other card here. I've got a few that are directional. All right. Ah, yes, the scythe. As you can see, the handle is down here. The sharp part is on the right. Whatever, wherever the sharp part is pointing to, to the right in my deck, is what will be cut. On this side, not so bad more of a harvesting quality to that whatever card is on this side. So that's a directional. Um, say you had this, a sudden quick cut is usually what the scythe is referring to. Um, could be saying it causes, it'll cause sickness or it'll cause, because sometimes the coffin refers to sickness, right? The, another directional. Uh, ah, the crossroads. That's a good one. Because the crossroads, again, there's something on this side, say a card on this side, 
It depends on which side. It's like you're moving towards, right? If the crossroads, though, ends at the end of the sentence, shall we say, then it's kind of like you're stuck in that place. You're not sure what to do. Kind of ends at that point. Okay. And let's see. Ah, the clouds. That's another directional card, even though you can't really see it. For me, I see it depends on one side of these car this card is a little brighter. Let me move that down for you. In other words, and in every tarot or tarot, sorry, every Letterman deck is different. My clouds are on my brighter clouds are on this side. Well, I guess it depends which <laughs> and the darker ones maybe are here. Actuality, it's the opposite. It's the bottom is dark and the top. And that would be good if you were reading the ground tableau. But in our case, I see this as brighter, things getting stormier on this side. Okay, so that again, like I say, is directional. So I don't know if this has helped you any. It's just sort of a quick summary of what some of these cards can do for you. I would highly recommend you start off, get your meanings, Get those down pretty good if you have to make some notes then go in and try reading the combinations see what you get then ask a question and see what you get with the combination cards and read them both ways the left side and the right side because again that does change meanings quite well venture into there's a lot of readers online uh, who will show you how they read the Lenormand cards and everybody's different now this is just the way I was I learned it you may find a different method that works better for you, okay? So I'm going to leave this with you, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Maybe I can do a chat and we can discuss some of them, or we'll do some more in my upcoming videos. So take care, my friends, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.